All right, everyone, I think we're going to uh, get started here. And uh, as people uh, keep trickling in, we'll, uh, we'll admit them. Um, I, want to, uh, I want to welcome uh, Bruce Yari um, uh, from, the, uh, from the Reds organization originally when we met him. And um, we're going to be talking today about how minor league players are training um, in this kind of strange uh, season that we've been having. Uh, but also more broadly talk about uh, pitch recognition, zone recognition, um, and uh, other aspects of how uh, your hitting development uh, interacts with these kind of invisible mechanics um, of hitting. Everyone's really familiar, I think, with the visible side of hitting. Uh, that's your, um, you know, your swing. Uh, that is your, um, you know, what kind of bat plane you're making, um, speed through the zone. Everyone talks about launch angle these days, exit velocity. Um, these are all important elements to hitting, uh, but there's this invisible side, really, not the visible mechanics of whether you're swinging, uh, what your swing plane is like, but really what kind of plane of the pitch are you seeing, right? And how is that connecting to um, what decisions you're making up at the plate to go for balls in certain parts of the zone or not? And so those are the items we're going to be talking about today, specifically in the context of how minor league players uh, like Bruce are uh, doing their training and trying to integrate those aspects of the invisible mechanics, how they recognize pitches, what parts of the zone they go for, and the more visible side, what the shape of their type of swing uh, looks like. And, and I'm looking forward to talking about this with, with you, Bruce, because um, as a left-handed hitter, there are some nuances, obviously, to the lefties um, that everybody you know, knows and talks about. And so I'm happy to you know, look at some of that today, specifically in the case of how um, you know, we did a strike zone assessment with you um, as an input to your AI training. And we'll also talk about how AI training in general for other players, pitch recognition and strike zone recognition um, is panning out too. So um, welcome, Bruce. We're re really glad to have you. Oh, you're muted. Let me unmute you. Let's see. There we go. I think we hear you now. Yeah. Um, thanks a lot for having me. Yeah. Really excited to be here and getting to talk with you guys about uh, vision training and just training in general. Okay, cool. Yeah, just as a word of background for everybody, uh, we've known Bruce for a long time because uh, uh, back in 2016, uh, the Cincinnati Reds were, were uh, experimenting with something that was made by a company called DeServo. Um, and uh, this is in the pre U hit days. And it was DeServo testing. And um, uh, Bruce was one of the lucky few who uh, was part of our analyses with brain measurements using EEG, kind of where you hits origins really are. And uh, since then, I think we've come a, obviously a long way in terms of simplifying it, making it something that you know fits on a uh, fits on your cell phone, um, and even something that uh, you know people can do at their own TV in their living room. But Bruce has seen a lot of iterations of uh, you hit over the years. And uh, we're really looking forward to hearing about his perspective on, on training in general uh, here today. Just to kind of kick it off, um, I wanted to ask you, Bruce, uh, specifically on uh, the U-Hit beta, because this is kind of a new thing maybe some people on the call haven't heard about yet, um, is the, uh, the new app that we are currently uh, beta testing for a select group of, uh, of users right now. Um, what's been your experience with that and really like uh, in the context of <laughs> where you've seen uh, you hit over the last years. Can you talk a little bit about that so far? Yeah, um, yeah. So I guess uh, originally back in uh, in 2016, I was part of that initial test group where uh, you, you know, for those of you who have seen you hit now, you have the nice uh, field in the background. There's uh, you know different uh, challenges uh, within the testing that you can do. Originally, you know, it was just a a blue screen where. Uh, you know, a ball would kind of, there'd be a, what was it, a, a circle and a ball would shoot out of there and, you know, you you'd do the same strike zone uh, recognition, but, you know, it's, it's come a long way. And then, you know, yeah, the, the app just continues to develop and uh, yeah, the, the, the new beta app, it's, it's looked great from what I've uh, seen from it so far. Um, one of the, the cool aspects that I like is you, is uh, your ability to kind of move your vision window um, within kind of the virtual world, uh, instead of it just being fixed uh, or a fixed screen. So you, you're able to kind of get on the side of the ball a little bit. So for me as a, 
as a left-handed hitter, I can kind of almost uh, simulate my vision from being uh, inside that that batter's box and kind of move my vision window around. So mm. I've, I've liked that aspect of it. Mm. That's 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 pretty interesting. I I didn't think about it necessarily from the you know from the lefty perspective particularly, but um, being able to turn the turn the phone and then see the the view a little bit differently as you turn yeah. the phone. That's been that's been kind of what that's kind of what you're talking about with yeah, yeah simulating exactly. window, right? Yeah, yeah, just to to try to you know just continue to make everything just more and more game game like and just getting those practice reps simulating your uh, your game reps. Cool. Okay. Yeah. Great. No, thanks. Uh, thanks for pointing that out. I think, um, you know, that plus, um, I, th I think, um, now with the phone being able to, when you rotate it, usually people play it like this, but now being able to, you know, rotate it in portrait mode, um, being able to be a little more locked into the pitcher. Can, have you noticed some of that too? Uh, yeah. So uh, I guess, you know, uh, when you think about yourself as a hitter being in the batter's box, um, w when you're up there, you know, you're really only focused in on the pitcher. So being able to, to rotate into portrait mode it just kind of shrinks that vision window again, to just kind of make it a little bit more game like, and because when you're up there, you know, you're, you're probably not looking, uh, second baseman to shortstop, you know, you're, you're really just dialed in, uh, kind of up the middle of the field and specifically, you know, on that, on the pitcher and his release point. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm. Okay, great. Yeah, no, I mean, uh, we're, we're excited for it. Um, you know, obviously, we're excited to, to help out our minor league players where we can and get them the beta, uh, you know, to play around with ahead of ahead of everybody. But anyone on the call, you know, if this is uh, something you do want to test out, and you haven't looked at it yet, um, you know, put a note into the chat, um, and we'll be able to get you a link to, to register that so we can send it right to your phone. Um, it will be opening up wider uh, relatively soon, but um, still we do have it as a small group because we do want to, you know, work out a few kinks that inevitably uh, arise. But um, yeah, we're really excited for the new development with the beta app and making that simulated feel, that real life feel um, up at the plate. So let's broaden it out a little bit, uh, Bruce. I, I'm curious for training kind of, I mean, not just your hitting vision, not just that, but like in general, what's your training been like what's your experience been like really over these last three months um as we got things uh you know as we got things shut down with coronavirus and all hell broke loose <laughs> what's it been like really for you training wise yeah you know it's it's been uh very different from i, I think what i would call a normal off season and especially considering that you know this isn't supposed to be an off season right now you know typically you'd be uh about halfway through a, a minor league season right now but instead we are sitting here with zero games played and uh you know the question mark of whether there will be any any games played this this summer but um i think the biggest thing is just getting a little bit creative with with what you have um i was fortunate enough i i got to take a uh a 45 pound kettlebell from uh, my university's baseball facility and a, uh, a bag of uh, the, uh, their hitting plyo balls. So uh, I was pretty much working with just those, those things. I had some, uh, some of the, uh, the bands as well. Um, so, you know, in terms of weightlifting, you know, it, where you'd typically be in a gym that has, you know, squat racks, benches, a variety of dumbbells, kettlebells, uh, and machines to use, you know, you really limited access to all of that. So, you know, it's just trying to, to find ways to work your different muscle groups with, uh, with different, uh, exercises. I was fortunate enough to be able to be in contact with our, uh, strength and conditioning coaches and they kind of, you know, lead you to some exercises that they think might, might help. And then you kind of figure out what works for you, what you like and don't like, and just kind of try to build a, a program from there. Um, ultimately, you know, you, you can only really do what you have the, the equipment to do, but you can, you know, if you give a hundred percent in those exercises, you know, you're going to see benefit from them, even though maybe it's not what you would typically be doing. You know, there's still a room to get better room to get stronger, uh, as long as, you know, you're still putting in that, that effort. Right. Right. And, and that sounds, you know, 
obviously specific to the, the, the physical training, um, you know, that, that definitely has an impact on the field. Um, how, how would you say um, you've been able to, you know, work with the, the, the lack of live pitching, um, you know, other kind of situational things um, that, you know, you probably get, you know, at this, like you said, this would be halfway through the season at this point, you would have seen plenty of live pitching. What's that been like and how have you tried to adapt um, in that environment? Yeah, well, um, you know, that's kind of where, uh, where you hit comes into play, where you have the opportunity to supplement, uh, you know, those live at bats with kind of virtual at bats. And although, you know, you're not necessarily standing in the box taking swings, you know, you can kind of simulate those at bats and pitch tracking. So, uh, you know, for me, I was, I was kind of limited to, to just taking side flips with my swings. So, you know, although I'm still working bat path and, uh, you know, working on my swing, um, I'm, I wasn't able to, you know, hit, hit pitching machine or hit live pitching and, and see that velocity. So, you know, that's where, where you hit comes in and you can start to, to simulate, you know, getting to see the, the mid nineties fastball again, and just staying prepared, um, you know, with, with your vision and mentally to be kind of on time to hit those pitches when we do return. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. No, it's um, we, we've been, we've been hearing more and more as, you know, as the lockdown, well, from when it started and then as it just prolonged um, and even now as some people are starting to get back out on the field um, you know, how do they get those live ABs or some kind of simulated live AB um, you know, you had either them doing it on their phone um, doing it on their TV um, with the game remote. And I know um, the reds touched on that a little bit, but I think when you were there, but I think it, you've, you've primarily uh, been a fan of using it on your phone. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, I just like the uh, the freedom that it gives me to you know just be able to kind of pick it up whenever I want. You know, um, m you know most of the time when I'm working with you, it it'll be kind of you know at, at the uh, the kitchen table after breakfast. You know, just eat a meal and then you we're know, like your Wheaties. I yeah, like that. <laughs> you, know, you you sit on most kids sit on their phone on you know Twitter or Instagram anyway. So you know or different gaming apps. You know, you just open up that app on your phone and, and spend a few minutes with it. Or, you know, if you're sitting on the, the couch watching TV, you can throw it on during commercial breaks. It's, you know, you, you just kind of, it, it's, it's, it's always there for you. So, you know, you can just pick it up whenever and, and it, you don't need to be, you know, at a field or at a baseball facility. You can, you know, do it from your own house or living room, kitchen, wherever. Right. Well, yeah. And I, and I, I think, you know, sometimes, the discussion of the, the ease of it like that. Um, I think sometimes, you know, because it's like, well, it's not exactly like I am out on the field, but um, you know, when you first did, you hit um, before it was even called, you hit with the blue screen, no picture, no field, nothing like that. Um, it was, um, it was designed to replicate the types of pitches you would see when you're actually out there on the field. Yeah. Um, and and, you know, and even still now with all these added things, the field, the pitcher, et cetera, it gives all those kind of visual comfort, I think, aspects as well. Um, but, you know, sometimes we do hear, you know, back from players, well, it's not exactly the same. And clearly it's not exactly the same. But this kind of, you know, vision work that you get from doing it at breakfast, on the couch, uh, between commercial breaks, um, you know, can you talk a little bit to that? Like what, where do you see the, the similarities to, you know, what you see when you're up at the plate and where do you see the differences? Like where, where do you draw the line in terms of like what, what you hits purview is, so to speak, in terms of, uh, you know, your preparation for hitting? Yeah. I mean, I mean, anytime you're, you're dealing with a virtual world, it's never going to be the exact same as if you're, you're standing out on the field facing a, a live pitcher with a, a real baseball but you know at the end of the day when you're hitting you know the, the the biggest thing with hitting is just seeing the ball and being on time to hit the ball and you know a lot of people have different philosophies on what the best approach is but at the end of the day you know you need to be on time to hit whatever pitch it is that you're looking to hit so um you know with you hit um i know you guys use um you know, the, the, the data from pitches to, to map those pitches exactly like how they would be in real life. So 
when you're sitting there with your phone, as long as you're locked in on the baseball when you're doing it, you know, you're getting about as, as close to real as, as you can get. Yeah. Well, and it's, I think going back to your point about, you know, physical training you're doing now, it's, it's kind of dependent on, you know, what you have available, right? If you, if you have Clayton Kershaw on hand to pitch you live batting practice every day, great. And if you can like tell him throw curves now, no, throw fastballs away now, Clayton, that's fantastic. Right. Yeah. Nobody has that. Not even the Dodgers have that. Right. (laughs) So, um, so, you know, it's, I think going back to that kind of like, well, you've got the, you know, the 45 pound dumbbell from, from, from UBC, you've got the bio bands, right? Th- this is kind of the equivalent of that, right? It's like you, everyone's got a phone, everyone's got the ability to do that. And it's not going to be perfect simulation of what it's like to actually be in there at the plate. But there is a lot of, a lot of work that can be done, a lot of good work that will be done, just like uh, right now, being able to work with those plyo bands, work with those 45 pound dumbbells, um, you know, will have an impact. And um, so, and I'm glad you brought up the, the data piece because um, it's, it's, it's where I want to shift to next and uh, talk a little bit about uh, AI training. And it's something that, uh, that we kicked off for you with, uh, with an assessment. Um, we'll show, uh, we're going to take a look at, at Bruce's assessment in a second. And, um, and then we're also going to uh, show you in, in some other cases um, how an assessment goes through, uh, leads to an AI training. We'll talk about what AI means in a second. Um, and then how that produces some differences in terms, of, um, in terms of what your accuracy, so that's how well you're calling balls and strikes, how well you're recognizing different types of pitches, and your reaction time changes as you do um, AI training. In Bruce's case, uh, we did the assessment, I think, a little bit earlier in the season, and then, you know, there's a lot of stuff going on. So we're just going to stick with his assessment to start, and then we're going to switch gears over to uh, uh, some other players to see really when you've run the clock a little bit on these AI trainings, how it really manifests um, in their, their U-hit metrics. And we can talk also about how those U-hit metrics really impact what happens on field. So at the end of the day, that's really what we're, we're working on here. We want to get, you know, more doubles, more home runs, more hits, more line drives, right? Uh, fewer strikeouts and getting on base more. So that's really uh, where we're going to shift to next. So I'm going to um, share the screen here and bring up Bruce's uh, assessment. If anybody has any question at this point, um, reminder again, at the bottom of the screen, you can tap on the window uh, if you're on your phone or you can click uh, hover on it uh, if you're on a computer and the chat uh, button will appear in the bottom of your screen and that will open a chat dialog to the right. So a few people so far have, uh, have used it to request the, um, the beta app and thank you for that. Um, if you um, are um, interested still in the beta app, you just put your email uh, into the, the chat here and say you're interested and we'll, we'll make sure to get you a registration link uh, to get that sent to you. Um, so I'm going to share a screen right now. Uh, again, if anybody has any questions, go for it. Um, but we're going to switch gears now and look at some of the data side um, of you hit, and particularly how it applies to to Bruce um, and uh, and his uh, AI training, which we're still in the middle of right now. So um, right now, what I'm uh, showing everybody on screen here is uh, is Bruce's strike recognition assessment. So uh, there are two different. Um, assessments to do when you hit there's the pitch recognition and the strike rec- strike zone recognition um now uh we, we have many uh, other minor league and major league players that are on this team here we're just going to be looking at bruce's right now um but uh, just to give you a sense really of what we're what we're measuring here data wise so in the strike recognition assessment bruce saw the actual pitches from two uh major league pitchers um, who are, they're not Clayton Kershaw's, they're not Max Scherzer's, they're not kind of that level of difficulty, um, but they are in the major leagues, um, and, uh, but not terribly difficult uh, pitchers to hit off of based on uh, uh, wins above replacement. So um, those are the standard pitchers for the, the strike zone recognition assessment, and that gives us a good idea about how well you are recognizing pitches in the zone. Here you're looking at the nine zones of the strike zone from the catcher's view. Um, and, um, and how well you are able to exhibit impulse control um, when the ball is out of the zone. 
So those are kind of things that we look at here in the profile. And this data is then put through artificial intelligence or AI to make a customized path for you, a prescribed path for you in UHIT for what you do every inning uh, with a, set, a, a concrete goal uh, that you have to accomplish. So those goals will get a little harder as you go on, and we'll talk about that in a second. But in the case of Bruce's assessment, I want to dive into this a bit because there were some things that um, I think relate to how these invisible mechanics of what you see and how you decide relate to the more visible mechanics, which is your swing. And um, I wanted to you know, bring this up a little bit with you, Bruce. Um, overall, we had an accuracy of, uh, of 65% here um, and a uh, reaction time of uh, 353, very quick reaction time. And generally, that is something that we see uh, with our professional players is that they are very quick to react in the zone. And that's really what this is a measurement of uh, right here. Um, now, something we will uh, work on in Bruce's AI training is getting this accuracy number up a bit because even though we're seeing a lot of hundreds here in the zone and we'll talk about exactly why we're seeing them where we're seeing them in a second we do want to work on the things outside of the zone right um, Bruce is one of the leaders in his org in terms of chase rates in the games um, and so what we're trying to do also is make that connection between that invisible mechanic of recognizing that's out of the zone impulse control shut it down and how that manifests in the game when you could actually start your swing, right? But you're recognizing that it's out of the zone and you kind of check a little bit, right? So that's something about how the invisible mechanics of recognizing connect to the visible mechanics. So Bruce, I want to ask you a little bit about this, this breakdown of zone accuracy here. Um, what strikes you in terms of like where you're seeing, you know, the hundreds, where you're seeing, um, you know, less than hundreds? in terms of you know, how you are at the plate as a left-handed hitter? Yeah, um, you know, I, I think the thing that really jumps out to me is uh, in terms of in, in the zone, um, you know, you have that, that middle inside where it, it seemed like I was you know, all over those pitches and, uh, and down and away. And you know, as, uh, as a hitter for myself, I know that, that I control the middle of the plate really well. And I've always had a, uh, done a good job of handling the low and away pitch uh, specifically like fastballs um, to that side, uh, just, you know, a pitch that I can get my hands extended to, um, you know, just being a, a bit of a bigger guy, you know, able to use my leverage on the, the outside part of the plate. Um, so, you know, it seems, it seems like, you know, just in my, uh, what would be my game approach, you know, I, I see that kind of translating into the, into the zone accuracy as well pitches, you know, that I'm, that I would be looking for in a game. Um, you know, you talk about uh, impulse control and, uh, you know, we were actually talking about this a little bit before the, uh, the seminar started. And I was saying that, you know, for me, it's something that I, uh, I tend to maybe struggle with a little bit within the you hit app is, is sometimes, um, you know, you're sitting there and you're, uh, you're, you're waiting to, to see the pitch and it's almost like I get that, that little twitch in my thumb ready to tap the screen because in my approach as a hitter, I, you know, I'm, I'm expecting the pitcher to throw me a strike and, and it's, you know, I go from, from thinking that I'm, I'm going to swing, I'm going to swing. And then once I recognize ball, a ball, then I'm going to shut it down. So, uh, you know, I, I find that for myself, it might be almost a little easier to shut down a swing than it is to shut down the, t the tap because that, that can happen almost on a twitch. Um, but again, you know, within training, you want to challenge yourself. So if, if I can control that, that thumb twitch, then, I, then I, in turn, I could actually become even better at controlling uh, shutting down a swing. Yeah, no, and that's, I mean, that's a, that's a good point. When talking about Mary and the invisible mechanics of, you know, impulse control to the more visible mechanics of the acceleration phase, the start of your swing. Um, you know, that's something we've, we've, we've talked about a lot with coaches and in terms of like really what is being measured in you hit, right? Um, it is, you know, it's just a tap on the screen clearly. Uh, but it is this, start when you're up at the plate and you are swinging it is the start of your acceleration it's your initial load and then you're you're going forward um into the zone and 
this aspect of challenging yourself is is really kind of the 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 thing that we we're targeting here because yes it is easy to have that backstop of a check swing right or of you've started your acceleration to the to the zone but now you're recognizing it's not there and so you've got to you know shut it down actively um we we're just trying to push that back even further and um you know and the, the reaction time is is an important aspect of that because even though um you know, we, we just show it as reaction time here. This is your reaction time to the zone, right? So these are for pitches that are in the zone uh, reaction time. We are also measuring, and we don't always show it in the, in the visuals here. Uh, we're also measuring your reaction time when the ball's out of the zone. So like your chase reaction time. And, and that's a very important number for us that factors into the AI training as well, because it tells us if you are chasing much faster for pitches out of the zone um, than you are for pitches, than you are, you know, reacting for pitches in the zone. It's telling us that you are not seeing those pitches as being in the zone very quickly. And you're connecting that to a, a, a movement, right? And so what we try to do is incorporate that into your AI training um, by, by trying to get you to wait a little bit more on those ones out of the zone so that you can recognize it that being out of the zone and shut it down appropriately. Right. Yeah. Um, and you know, and Bruce, you mentioned something before we got on that I, I found pretty interesting. What you said is that you notice that you do a little better when you not wait to see the pitch because no one wants to wait as a hitter, but you, you try to see a little bit more of the pitch. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. I've found that, uh, in a few of my sessions, especially if I've had a couple where, where I felt like I, you know, had that impulse chase, I kind of dial it back a little bit from there. And then, you know, I might go on a little bit of a, a run of getting a bunch in a row. Right. And I, I end up doing a little bit better in that session when I just allow myself to kind of track that ball a little bit more. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I think that's a little bit of separating, you know, in a game, you feel like you're starting earlier because there's more that you have to do in order to be able to hit a ball versus, you know, tap the screen, you know, you, you, with the, with the, you hit, you know, you, you're not hitting it, you're tracking the ball. And that's what we're trying to train here is, is the vision. So sometimes I kind of just need to remind myself of that a little bit and that, you know, it's going to translate into hitting the ball, but for this, you know, it's, I, I need to, I need to lock in on the baseball. I need to see the pitch flight and start to see if it's, if there's break or if there's run or sink or right. just, you know, allow myself to kind of um, see that and then uh, make a cognitive decision to, to touch the screen or not. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Can you talk about the, uh, the uh, away part of your zone here in terms of, you know, we were, we're having hundreds everywhere, pretty much the low and away, the in uh, middle of the, of the, the center of the plate. Um, can you talk a little bit about your preferences for pitches away? Yeah, um, just uh, with with how my swing works as a hitter, uh, I I typically try to to stay away from pitches, up, especially up and away. You know, in that uh, looking at the left side of the plate there, this um, area here. So yeah, I I, I can see a, a situation. Oh, I'm gonna mute somebody here. Hold on. There we go. Okay. Yeah, I can uh, I can see myself getting into a situation where maybe um, you know a pitch was was going into that quadrant, but in a in a game, I know that I'm not swinging at that pitch kind of unless I get to a, a two strike situation. You know, for me, and and how knowing what pitches I like and pitches that I'm capable of of doing damage with, typically that up and away pitch is is one that I'll stay away from. So yeah, I can I can kind of see a situation where the ball was going in there, but for me that kind of almost looks like a, a a bad pitch. Right, right, and that's and that's I think something that um, sometimes you know we we uh, we don't really emphasize um, directly in the app. I think it's something that when coaches work with um, individual hitters is really where this this comes through. That um, you know we generally prioritize in the the challenges i think you mentioned the challenges that are in you hit um we generally prioritize you covering the entire zone 
or you'll have challenge innings that focus on just, you know, one side of the plate or one uh, upper or lower region of the plate. Uh, but one of the ways that coaches have, um, you know, customized you hit for these specifics of somebody's swing, and in the case of yours, <clears throat> would be that we're just going to be going for pitches that are in center and right side of the plate, let's say. Um, if we are adapting this specifically for, for Bruce Yari's swing, we're going to be focusing on just, you know, him going on pitches in this part of the zone as if we're simulating like early count pitches, right? Now, once we get into later count, let's say we got two strikes, then of course we do have to expand the zone a little bit, our personal zone, right, to cover the actual strike zone. And that's where recognizing these pitches then become a little more important. Clearly it's not, um, you know, in the wheelhouse, so to speak, of your swing, but when it's two strike count, um, the pitches out here become dangerous because they can, you know, you can be called out uh, looking um, on those. And so those are some aspects, I think some nuances of the AI training um, and the, the challenges that are preloaded for everybody um, in UHIT uh, to, keep in, to keep in mind. The generic uh, challenges that come to you with UHIT, uh, novice strike zone recognition, novice pitch recognition, rookie, uh, expert pitch recognition, et cetera. Um, those are all getting like kind of broad brushstrokes in terms of a general trend of covering the entire zone or recognizing all these different types of pitches. They may not be specific to your strengths and weaknesses, just like we're looking at uh, Bruce's assessment here. And there are certain strengths that come through and certain, you know, gaps there, but they're really gaps that are connected to the specifics of his swing, right? And so these are the kind of things that we can really unpack in an assessment and then program into um, in, AI, uh, in AI training. So I'm gonna uh, switch gears to um, another, um, another, player, uh, another player's uh, profile. And uh, then we're gonna uh, look at how his uh, AI training uh, had an impact um, from where he started and to where he ended up. So, uh, so what we have, on screen here is, uh, is another player um, who's working at a facility in St. Louis. And I'm gonna show you guys kind of where he started, where he is now, um, and we're gonna also talk about uh, what happened in UHIT um, when he was doing AI training and to see, get a sense of like how that worked and how we got from point A to point B. So um, just here, um, I'm gonna switch back and forth between uh, now we're at the, the Sandlot Elite uh, um, Academy, it's in St. Louis, um, and um, at his assessment, this player, Evan Davis is his name, he had a 60% accuracy, okay? Now note the reaction time here, much lower, uh, in other words, much slower than what we saw with Bruce, right? So that's, a, like I said, a big difference usually with professional players is that they are much faster reaction time-wise to the zone. But it's really about this trade-off between your accuracy and your reaction time together. And, and that's really um, something that now we've simplified in the beta so that uh, you see points accumulate as you're faster in the zone and as you are more accurate. So with this player, he had a 60% accuracy at a 436 uh, reaction time in his assessment. Um, now he's done, um, he's, gone, he's got one round of strike recognition uh, AI training. Um, he's been really working on pitch recognition, which is where we're going to shift to in a second. But you already see, if you look at his accuracy uh, differences, you really see the impact that we're already having in terms of his accuracy increasing by uh, 12, 12 points, right, 12%, um, and his reaction time coming down by a non-trivial amount, 40 milliseconds, right? You know, we never tell anybody to wait on pitches up at the plate and we certainly try to tell people, you got to get your bat around faster, you have to decide faster, et cetera, right? Here, we're measuring that directly with the AI training as we see going from the assessment 395 to the uh, uh, 436 to the, uh, where he is now after doing some AI training 395. I'm going to show you some of the mechanics of his pitch recognition, though, because that's really where you see the power of the AI training um, in you hit really playing out. And it's something that we're doing now um, with Bruce too, based on his assessment. Um, 
So uh, again, uh, started uh, assessment. Uh, this is now pitch recognition, where you're not just calling pitches in, in the zone, out of the zone. You're trying to recognize fastballs, curveballs, and sliders. Um, and uh, the way you're doing that is that you're told, uh, many of you I'm sure are familiar with you hit already, um, so this might be a review, but for those of you who don't know, uh, you're given a text on the screen that says fastball, and then a pitch comes, and it could be either a fastball, a curveball, or a slider. And if it matches, if that's a fastball that came, you got to tap the screen, right? If it doesn't match, then you got to hold off, right? So a next pitch could come, and it could say slider beforehand, and then the pitch comes, and it can either be fastball, curveball, or slider. So again, if it matches, you go. If it doesn't, you don't go. Impulse control. And so that's what we assessed here um, with this player. And um, accuracy when he started, 51%. Reaction time, 498 uh, milliseconds, or 0.498 seconds. Now, before we do the before and after, um, I want to highlight really what you're seeing in terms of the different types of pitches, too. Because fastballs, curveball sliders tell us all a very unique story about a hitter's vision up at the plate in terms of how well he sees things like the horizontal movement of a slider. Here you see it's around 50%. So it's a pretty close driver, strong driver of what you're seeing up there. Um, or the vertical movement, which is really most strongly exhibited by the curveball, um, and some extent by the fastball as well. So you're seeing in general with this player that the biggest driver on his 51% accuracy is the, the horizontal movement discrimination problem, right? His sliders are basically 50% too, right? And so he's got an equal chance between go, no go. In other words, he's not really seeing those differences between sliders and the other pitches. So now this player has done three rounds of AI training. Um, and this is where we are now with him. His accuracy is at 71%. His reaction time has dropped by uh, 20 milliseconds. So just to give you the comparison again, we started at 51% overall accuracy in pitch recognition. Now we're at 72%, 71%, um, with a little bit of a drop in the reaction time too. When we look at the details of his horizontal movement uh, with sliders, vertical movement with curveballs, and even the vertical aspects of the fastball, we see a very different story. Keep an, keep an eye, for instance, on this number right here, for accuracy in sliders. He started at around 50%. Now we're seeing that that is bumped up to 70, right? So what's going on? He's able to start seeing now that horizontal movement that just differentiates a slider or the lack of that uh, horizontal movement if it happens to be any of these other pitches, right? Um, horizontal, uh, vertical movement, he was okay at before. You'll notice there wasn't a huge change in his curveballs, right? He went from 72 to 77, right? but we really see the big change showing up on his fastballs, right? That he's able to now really tell the difference vertical and the horse, you know, differentiating this, the straight on movement of a fastball from the horizontal movement of a slider over here. So now we see this huge jump in his uh, fastball accuracy. And so the question really now is, all right, how did we make these changes? How did we affect these changes in, in Evan's pitch recognition, right? And um, what did you hit do? What did he do in you hit in order to do that? Well, I'm going to switch uh, switch screens uh, right now and take you all over to you hit to show you that. While I'm doing that, if anybody has any questions, again, you can uh, hit the uh, chat button that's at the bottom of the screen, and that will bring up a window on the side, and you can ask any question um, either for uh, for me or for Bruce um, with any of the topics that we've uh, we've covered so far. So while I'm switching screens, um, feel free to put those questions in the chat and we'll get to them uh, as soon as we can. All right, so what we've got up on the screen now is we're in UHIT. Uh, we are in the challenges section of UHIT and we'll get, I'll show, if anybody's not familiar with that, we can you know take a step back and go there. But what you're looking at is um, Evan's first round of AI training for pitch recognition. Um, this is his second round of pitch recognition AI training. This was his third round, right? Now, each of them, they say zero of nine, zero of nine progress. That's not true. He's finished all these. We're just looking on a different account. We're not looking on his account. We just loaded his, his training into, into this one we're looking at here. 
And you also see his strike recognition AI, which is something he's gone through as well, led to those changes that we saw in accuracy. So I'm gonna jump into his pitch recognitions. That's a very good illustration of the, where we started in the assessment. Remember 51% accuracy, around uh, 498 um, milliseconds in terms of reaction time. And we're gonna see how the innings get progressively harder um, as he goes on and he unlocks one inning after he finishes the previous one, right? So to start things off for Evan, he was at 51% accuracy, 498 uh, reaction time. So what do we do? We take that data, we put it in the artificial intelligence and it gives him a prescribed plan to follow, okay? And that prescribed plan starts him at a pretty simple goal here. 50% accuracy, right? So that's a little low where he scored. And the reaction time threshold is relaxed by about 50 milliseconds. Give him a little more time to respond to the pitches, right? Once he's accomplished that, he moves on to 52% accuracy. Once he's accomplished that, he moves on to 54% accuracy goals, et cetera. So it keeps getting a little harder for him to get past the inning, right? Now we get to the fifth inning. Something changes, right? Why did the accuracy go down to 50%? Well, what's going on here is that the first through the fourth innings back here, these were all at pitch speeds that were lower than we got to in the fifth inning, right? Why is that? Because when he did his assessment, we had an average pitch speeds of around 78 miles an hour. That's a way we try to capture a broad range of players, whether it's youth all the way up to professional players like Bruce. And so what we saw with Evans uh, pitch recognition assessment was that it was a little, he was having trouble discriminating the pitches. So we slowed them down a little bit. We made the accuracy threshold more manageable for him, right? But by the time he's gotten to this fifth inning here, he's already shown us that he's able to get a higher accuracy at these lower speeds. So we can now bring those speeds up just a little bit more. And that's what the AI does for him, right? So at this higher speed, he's going to 52%, 54%, to 56% and rounds out his AI training first round uh, in the ninth inning at 58% accuracy. So let's dive into one of these innings now so you can see kind of what these speeds look like. And keep in mind, it's gonna be a little choppy here on the screen uh, because we are doing a screen share, but you do see right up in front of you when you, look, when you go into your, your AI training, what pitch speeds you're doing, here he's doing 76 miles per hour on average, right? Keep in mind the assessment was a little harder. It was at 78. And he's got his goals right up in front of him. So we're just going to do a couple of pitches here on, sc on screen. But whenever I uh, see the match, of, I'm going to look for a text. I'm looking for a slider right now. And if I think that's a slider, I tap. You see my tap there? Uh, that was actually wrong. So I'm looking for a slider once more. I tap. That was a fastball up right? Um, so I was wrong. I'm looking slider one more time. Hopefully I get one. Nope, that was a curveball. So this is the way that we're testing my ability here and Evan's ability really to identify a pitch ahead of time. I'm looking for a fastball. I'm looking for a curveball. I'm looking for a slider. And then being able to recognize that and either pull the trigger on it or exhibit impulse control and pull back. And he's got to hit these goals. 50% accuracy, 550 reaction time, right, on 76 mile per hour pitches, right? So once he finished that inning, he went on to the second inning with a slightly higher goal, third inning, slightly higher goal, until we got to the fifth inning where we brought the speed up, but we brought the accuracy goal down a little bit. That's what the AI did. And we keep progressing, so he rounds out um, these innings by ending up at 58% accuracy, right? Um, any questions from anyone uh, at this point about how AI training works uh, before I take a look and show you the, the last round that uh, Evan has done that got him to this kind of 71, 72 um, percent that we're seeing right now. Any questions from anybody? I'm seeing a couple of messages here, so I'm going to switch over. Um, it looks like there is a question about uh, uh, talking about college programs and hitting facilities, how they would implement this kind of training. So uh, we'll, uh, we'll address that in one second. Thank you for submitting that. Um, looks like some people are also submitting here uh, email addresses to get uh, registered for the beta app. So thank you for doing that. Um, feel free to keep putting that into the chat. 
We'll get to the college program and hitting facility question um, in one second, just as we, uh, we wrap up here, uh, looking at uh, this last AI training round. Um, last uh, question also that popped up here is, um, how, does, uh, how does UAID help make adjustments at the plate quicker? Um, so we'll get into that in a second. I think Bruce might be, uh, might be interesting to talk about that um, from your perspective for day-to-day -day preparation for games. Um, so we'll come back to that just as we uh, wrap up this and look quickly at where Evan's goals are now in his AI training going to 62%, 64%. Notice the reaction time thresholds. They're lower than the 550 where we started, right? So we see again uh, a reset of the accuracy, speed went up, right? So these are ways that the AI training gives you a prescribed path through uh, UHIT so that by the time you finish uh, doing a round of AI training, you can go back to where you were at the assessment and do this kind of comparison to say, I was at 51%, now look, I'm at 71%. Why is that important? Because accuracy and reaction time are the two biggest correlates we see of on-field performance. People who have higher accuracies, we found in minor leagues, many, Bruce was in the cohort of the Reds players, we found this with Pirates players, Cardinals players, you name it, the minor leagues. People who had higher accuracy at U-Hit, had better zone contact, better in-zone swing rates, right? Uh, and fewer chase rates, okay? Reaction time in the zone, incredibly important for contact, getting consistent hits in play. We saw that if you're faster in the zone, you had more hits in play in general. So these are the kind of things that we know from working with minor league teams, minor league players like Bruce, that this impacts on the field. And so the AI training, all it's doing really is targeting these two metrics, your accuracy, your reaction time, to really get you in the zone for being able to do some damage when you are up at the plate. So, um, I'm going to pivot over to some questions now, um, and, uh, and uh, Bruce, I think uh, we'll probably uh, kick a few of these to you because I think they could be, uh, could be interesting to hear. So I'm going to go back to the, if you were given you hit uh, technology to take back to your old college program or hitting facility, how would you implement it? Let's say you took it back to UBC today. What, what do you think you would do with it? Yeah, um, you know, I think one of the great things about it is in its flexibility in the app is that there's, you know, hundreds of different ways that you could implement it. Uh, just kind of thinking off the top of my head, if you were able to to get it on all your players' phones, with well, then you could start to, to allow them to use it maybe when they're away from the field. So, you know, everyone knows that that college practice times are limited to a number of hours per week, a uh, number of days per week. You know, it's it's something that you could allow your players to continue to practice away from the field. You know, additionally, you could if you had a uh, you know a, a team iPad or a, a TV set up, you could implement it as a as a hitting rotation group. You know, maybe uh, before you actually step into the cage and you're waiting on your on your uh, your cage time. You know, you're you're doing a, a session prepare yourself for that uh, you know i think there's plenty of different ways but the the biggest thing with it is just you're, you're getting guys more reps mm -hmm. and it, you know it, it, you're getting them game reps without having to you know stage an entire game kind of like you said before you know not everyone has a clayton kershaw per personal pitcher to follow them around whenever they want and throw a million pitches but you know through this you you, you do right Right. Yeah, no, that's, that's, um, that, that is helpful to hear. I mean, and I think that is a point that colleges regularly bring up and college coaches uh, regularly bring up to me is, you know, the limited time that they do have with the players and, um, you know, how, I mean, it's, it's, we're, we're a third party, right? And so they, they, the players get the reps that they need, um, but still the coaches have the ability when the players give the permission, the coaches have the ability to see, you know, who's doing their work, who's getting their work in when I can't be there with them physically um, on the field. And that's a, uh, that's a, that's a really, uh, I think, good point. Thanks for mentioning that. Um, how would you, um, if you were speaking to other players, um, cause you know, sometimes, sometimes we get caught in science speak, I think too often. Right. 
if you were communicating to to players really you know you hit vision training how it connects even to you know uh you know cage work other things like that how would you communicate the value of it um to players versus like coaches or you know or, or other folks you know, I, I think the biggest thing just from a player's perspective is it's giving you an opportunity to kind of simulate at bats for yourself and just simulate seeing live pitching. Um, you know, you, you hear a lot of people talk about like, Oh, you know, I wish I had more at bats in a season. I, you know, um, this kind of gives you the opportunity just to be able to see more live pitching and it, and it creates a situation where, you know, um, you start out, you know, you were looking at, at Evans there and you're saying you started out at a certain velocity and then you're able to increase. And then, you know, as he, he increases through those levels, you know, he, he's in his uh, vision training and, and recognition, he's getting comfortable seeing higher velocity. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and we talk about kind of in this downtime, you know, if anyone were just to step back out onto a field and you start facing a guy, you know, at whatever age group level you might be, that's throwing hard for that age group. You know, your timing's going to be way off. It's you know, it's going to be really tough on you. But this kind of allows you to, to just keep seeing that, that live pitching, and and you're, you will start to develop timing off those pitches as well. And it just kind of it just makes it easier for you once you get into that game situation. Right. Do you see any? Um, do you see any difference really between? Because I I think this. Um... The, the focus on, you know, getting simulated live at bats, it sounds like the most important, you know, thing. I wish I had more, you know, live ABs and things like that. Um, do you see any aspect where like, um, you know, guys might just start kind of getting too much in a rhythm and not really taking the feedback of, oh man, that was way out of the zone. You know what I mean? Like, do you ever see a potential with you hit where, because you're not actually generating a swing, right? Um, and getting physically tired, right? Um, do you ever see a potential like, you know, either burnout um, on one hand, or uh, that um, it, doesn't, it doesn't give the same kind of feedback to you of, oh man, I just crushed that over the fence, or oh man, I just swung at something that was way over my head um, in the same kind of way. Can you, you know, talk to that a little bit too? Yeah, I, I guess, you know, it's kind of would be a little bit more of like a middle ground, like you're not going to get the same satisfaction of, of hitting a home run. And maybe, you know, you don't feel quite as bad if there's a pitch that would be at your eyes and you're, you're tapping the screen on it. But I, I think what it, what is important is just kind of, you know, you, you take the information for what it is. And it's, you know, it's a tool to help you. Right. It's it isn't the exact same as as being in the batter's box and and hitting off a pitcher, but, but it's a tool that's going to help you for when you do get into those situations that you, you know, have a better idea of, of what you're doing and your approach and your, and your recognition. And it, you know, it's just, it's something to add to your, to your game. That's just ultimately going to help you. Yeah. What other technologies or uh, I guess techniques um, do you, would you see combining it with, we got a, a couple of questions about that. And I'm just kind of curious, um, you know, what you've seen or, or, you know, done yourself on that regard, other technologies, they're just kind of a natural fit um, for that kind of approach. Yeah. Uh, I, I know for myself, uh, we, uh, with the Reds had access to a, you know, a, a computer program called true media, which kind of uh, took track man data from all your at bats and, you know, showed you uh, different percentages, heat zones within the, um, within, you know, the strike zone where you know you make better contact where you swing and miss a little bit more mm -hmm. um, so you know when when you start to, and we kind of talked about that earlier with uh me not liking those up and away pitches as much you know it's um i think it's important to to know your zone and your strengths but additionally you know just because i don't like a pitch up and away doesn't mean that i shouldn't be able to recognize it right right because, yeah if, if i if I do like a pitch in a certain area and, you know, you start to get into that a little bit more with pitch tunneling with, with uh, pitchers, you know, you might think it's going into a certain area where it is a hot zone for you. And then if it breaks out of that zone or sinks out, you know, right. to be able to recognize that and as, as early as possible. Right. I think, yeah, 
biggest thing uh, I know not everyone has access to, you know, their actual heat zone, but you know, if you, as a, as a hitter, you start to figure out what pitches you like. I know, I know pretty much everyone loves a fastball down the middle. I know I do. Mm -hmm. uh, I always, you know, found it a little funny. Oftentimes coaches ask, you know, what like pitches people like, and it seems like people are almost embarrassed to say that they like a fastball down the middle, but I know, I know that's my favorite pitch to get. I love when pitchers miss to the middle of the plate, <laughs> <laughs> but you want to be able to recognize when they do. And when you start to see those pitches over the plate, cause that's when you can start to do some damage with it. Right. Right. Yeah. Maybe the people who are parked behind the, uh, the left field wall, you know, yeah. the right field wall don't like it, but, uh, but you like it. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, no, that's, 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 that's really great. I mean, I think the, uh, uh, you know, as we're seeing this kind of like bigger presence of, you know, uh, technology and baseball, um, you know, it's a question of how to integrate these things through media um, as being something that uh, integrates your, your heat maps really um, is something that's, you know, I think, you know, obviously much more available to, uh, obviously much more available to um, a, uh, um, to somebody at, uh, you know, at a professional team, uh, but you can get certain, you know, if you're self-aware enough as a hitter, you can start to see these kind of tendencies you have. Um, of course, middle of the plate, everybody loves. Um, but, you know, whether you're more of an away hitter, a low and away hitter, um, yeah. and, uh, and whatnot. And, and even with how we, you know, looked at your, your strike zone assessment with you hit, you see like kind of how those numbers are showing up to some extent there. And like why, for instance, you know, there was a little bit less if you just looking at one pitch after the other, a little bit lower accuracy on that higher and away part, right? Because it's just not something you prioritize generally um, as a hitter. So um, yeah, that's all really, uh, really good stuff is um, what about like making adjustments like in the season? Like right now we're in this kind of like, you know, <laughs> holding pattern state uh, of, of training and we're not really sure when seasons happen or if they'll happen um but thinking for a moment like you know when when seasons were happening day to day um how do you use technology do you use technology uh you know to really make any you know small adjustments where you're noticing something's going on for the last few games and you know you want to make an inter you know you want to intervene on it you want to do something um what what do you what do you notice on that that front small adjustment side yeah um I, I, you know, personally, I definitely use uh, technology to help me. Um, I, you know, we're not necessarily fully reliant on it because you can't take your iPhone with you into the batter's box. Mm -hmm. but at the end of the day, you know, if, if I'm just thinking back to, you know, a past season that I had where, uh, you know, I, I did go through a little bit of a stretch where I was swinging at pitches that were up out of the zone. And, you know, the way, a way that, you know, you hit actually helped me was, you know, you just, get into that strike recognition and you just, you see some pitches up and then you start to kind of see that ball flight a little bit better. And then when it comes down to game time, you know, you're able to, it's a little easier to lay off those pitches because you've seen them a few times more. Right. Um, yeah. You have your personal Clayton Kershaw ahead of time. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So when you yeah. see him for real, it's a little less jarring, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. And, you know, so I, I think everyone's had it where, at some point, you know, you see a pitch and your eyes light up and you, and you think that you're just going to crush it and you swing and you, and you realize that the, the pitch wasn't anywhere close to where you thought it was going to be originally. Right. So, you know, if you start to see a little trend develop of that, you know, you can kind of just, yeah, just jump in and, you know, just have a, a couple strike recognition uh, sessions, you know, and really try to focus on that pitch. And, and when it comes up, you know, you know, be aware of, of, of really watching the ball flight and just it starts to just kind of normalize it a little bit for you and you, you so that when you get into the, your game situations it's uh you know you're not getting fooled right right and and it's even as uh you know sitting in the in the you know in the locker there right with you know with your phone right i mean it's not like a vr goggles or anything like that um it's you know just looking at it on your phone right um, before the game starts getting that kind of similar visual feel right absolutely and you know that's one of the things that i that i love about the app is yeah you can do it at your locker you know you you can do it wherever um, 
in the minor leagues there, especially on, on home games, there's a lot of downtime throughout the day. You know, you show up to the field at, you know, two o'clock, two 30 for a, for a seven Oh five start, you know, you're there for a long time. So it's, it's easy to get, you know, a session in at your locker. It's just, uh, you know, it's very convenient for the players, which is, you know, something that I love about it. Yeah. Yeah. No, and it's something we've, we've definitely prioritized is as we, as we started working in baseball, we realized, you know, this has got to fit, right? It's got to fit everybody's experience here. And, um, and that's something we've worked hard, hard on and, you know, we've got more to do clearly, but you know, we're, we're, we're continuing in that path. So, um, I just want to, uh, one last question I think about, um, you know, your, your, your playing so far. Um, and this comes from one of our other U at specialists is, uh, says that you were, you were a, part of a impressive 2016 Reds draft class and wanted to hear a little bit more about um, how pitch recognition um, either helped you or your teammates, um, maybe expanding this discussion to your teammates as well here to, to grow or improve in terms of like how they developed their hitting power tools um, as they were um, going through the minors. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I think that, pitch recognition and you know hit it hit tool power tool it, it's stuff that all goes hand in hand it's you know it's kind of the reason why there are plenty of people out there who can hit batting practice home runs but you know it, it, we all know it's a lot more difficult to do in a game and uh you know the, the more comfortable and better you get with uh pitch recognition you know the easier it's going to be to hit for power because you're going to make the right decisions at the plate um I don't know how many times you've seen anyone hit a, a slot, an O2 slider in the dirt for a home run, but you know, it doesn't happen, but people swing and miss at it all the time. And then likewise, you know, how many times do you see a three, one fastball getting, getting hit over the fence? You know, um, th those are kind of like two extreme situations and, you know, a pitcher's count hitters count, but uh, how, you know, how do you up the odds in your favor for those other counts? You know, you're right. Your oh oh, your two two, three two, and then likewise, how do you lay off that oh two slider so that you can get yourself back in the count and maybe get a pitch that you can hit right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, being able to I guess be flexible up at the plate, right? In terms of what the situation is dictating, early in the count, late in the count, game situation, all those things connect to your your pitch recognition and uh, you know your your hit power tools too, right? Yeah, exactly, because. You know, you the, the pitch limits a little bit what you can do with it um so you know if, if you're able to to recognize a good pitcher's pitch and lay off it and instead of maybe hitting a weak ground ball you see another pitch and you know even guys at the you know professional level like they make mistakes with pitches it's, it's always going to happen people will miss over the plate so when you're able to recognize those balls that travel into your your hot zones that's when you can start to to do some damage with them. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's, that's great. And, and, um, and I assume that's something you kind of saw with some of your other teammates as, as you guys embarked on uh, first the DeServo testing and then, you know, the other kind of usage that you saw after that a bit. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, I, and I think, you know, as you start to, to move up in the, in the minor leagues, you, you notice that uh, you know, people do uh, make better decisions at the plate. Oh. They, you know, maybe know themselves as hitters a little bit better. Um, a lot of times when you, when you're in the, the rookie level, there's a lot of raw talent, but it's a lot of just people up there swinging at, at, at everything, mm -hmm. you know, as you, as you move up, you need to kind of be able to, uh, to recognize pitches and lay off good pitchers, pitches, pitches out of the zone, mm -hmm. extend your at bats and, and wait for something that you can drive. Yeah, no, I mean, I've, I've we've, we've heard, from, um, you know, as we've worked with the different levels in, in minor league, uh, you know, from rookie all the way up to triple A, um, you know, something we've heard back is that the, the pitching also is something that changes too. It's not just the hitters are becoming more aware of themselves, but also that the pitchers um, are getting better control over what they do. And, um, you know, they're not going to be throwing, you know, some crazy pitches out there as, you know, as you go up higher and higher in the level. And so there's kind of two competing things going on. There's, you know, the pitchers are getting more control over things, but the hitters in order to really 
uh, you know, survive and stay at that level and keep moving up, they've also got to become uh, better at recognizing those, those nuanced differences, right? Yeah, absolutely. You know, as pitchers get better, they, they start to control their, their pitches a little bit better. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, that's when, that's when you really need to lock in because they're going to throw some stuff that at some point, you know, you're going to think it looks like a good pitch and it's not a good pitch or, uh, yeah, you, you think that it's, it's way outside and then tails back over the plate or right. Right. A backdoor or a ball or something, you know, there's a million different things that they can do, but (laughs) a million different ways they can give you a headache up there. Right. (laughs) Well, that's, I mean, and that's, and that's really kind of part and parcel of, you know, what, what our approach has been with you hit, what it's been with AI training, what's been with our simulated at bats that we provide with the remote is, is, you know, making really picking apart those things first before you get on the field. Right. Um, so that when you get out on the field, there you're ready, ready for it. Right. And it's not something you have to think about. Um, it's something that is instinctual and it's on the level of I tap or I don't tap or I press the button or I don't press the button. So, um, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to, uh, switch gears here as we, as we start wrapping it up to just point out a few resources for everybody who's on the call here, um, in terms of where to get some more information, because, um, I think we've talked about a lot of, a lot of areas here in terms of, uh, training, how minor league players are training right now, specific cases of, uh, you know, Bruce's assessment another player's assessment and AI training. And, um, I want to, you know, make sure everyone has the resources as a jumping off point, uh, from this discussion. Uh, to take the next step, really, in terms of figuring out what are your strengths and weaknesses um, up at the plate, whether it's zone recognition, pitch recognition, um, and then how to get those uh, simulated ABs and how to particularly focus on those things that pitchers might then find to exploit with you. So I'm going to um, put one uh, one link in the chat here, which is um, it's uh, to our new um, – you hit a uh, website, which is something that uh, only really came out over the last day or so. Um, we've been doing a limited invite again for people to uh, test it out. Um, we just dropped the link into the chat for you there. It's kind of a long uh, gaggle of string there, but that will take you to the new uh, you hit baseball website where we've packed it uh, with a bunch of information on, on assessment and training using AI on your simulated at bats um, on coach tracking, we know there's some coaches in the audience here. Um, how do you uh, keep track of your players' assessments? How do you keep track of their AI training? Uh, we go into that with coach tracking here. Um, the the really the entity that has brought this uh, event together is the UHIT uh, Academy, and the the UHIT Academy is also now connected to the main Deservo page, um, and you can access that as well. Um, directly from the link there. Um, so that's a resource everyone on this call can use to find out more information about how we do simulated at bats in your living room. Um, how you can have your own personal Clayton Kershaw really for your simulated at bats if you're ready for that. But really what you know it's what we'd like to focus on here is how do we you know identify what are your particular strengths and weaknesses? That's where the assessment starts everything off like we looked at with Bruce. And then how does that lead to your AI training and the results that you see, like when we looked at a player like, um, like Evan earlier. So uh, you guys have one resource already in the, in the chat window there, and I'm going to put another one in there um, right now, which uh, might look a little similar, um, but it is uh, more of a direct route to uh, everyone's question always is um, in terms of options for starting, right? Um, I want a kind of a self-guided thing. I want a, the simulated at bat. I don't want the simulated at bat. I just want the AI training. So this breaks down for you the different options that we have with you hit right now. Um, and I will point out that the the um, the middle option, uh, the AI training, is the one that Bruce is doing right now. Um, when you do go to that link that we just put in the chat for you, so um, you've got a lot of info uh, via those uh, those two links uh, to look at. Um, and if there are any questions uh, for Bruce. Any questions for uh, us at UHIT? Um, we haven't, uh, we've had you know, quite a healthy uh, serving of questions so far, so we really appreciate that. But if there's anything we haven't covered, whether it's you know, something about the new beta app and you wanna register to get that, uh, drop a message in the chat. If it's something about how 
um, you know, players right now are utilizing the tools that are around them to stay sharp physically, to stay sharp cognitively. Um, drop it in the chat. We can, uh, we can just touch on that. Um, but um, while we, uh, you know, wait on a few uh, last, uh, last minute questions there, I want to thank you, Bruce, for making some time and talking with, uh, you know, with the UHIT audience. Um, this is going to be uh, put on our YouTube channel as well, so that uh, many people who couldn't make the, uh, the seminar today will be able to follow there. Um, I know one of your fellow minor leaguers, uh, uh, Jared Oliva, he said he was getting some live ABs right at this moment, so he wasn't going to be able to be live, but he wanted the video. And there are many others, too, uh, that wanted to be able to, to see this. So I think, um, you know, beyond the group here, this has been great. And we all just want to, you know, thank you for uh, making the time and, you know, talking to us today about how you're, uh, how you're training during this period. So thank you. Yeah, uh, yeah it was my pleasure. I was happy to do it. Okay, cool. All right, well, it looks like there, uh, there are no other uh, burning questions in the audience. We covered a lot of ground here. So um, keep a lookout, everybody, for um, uh, any, uh, any um, information we covered in, in the uh, seminar here today. Uh, that'll come to you via, via email. Um, and um, we, uh, we will follow up uh, next week or two just to make sure there were no other questions. Um, and um, you know, thank you for the people that did uh, send in additional uh, registration requests for the beta app. We're really excited to get that out there. Um, and, um, and we really, uh, you know, look forward to some of your feedback on the new you hit website as well that you have links for um, now in the chat. So keep in mind, you can get um, also the simulated bats from you hit, you can get on Amazon. So if you look up you hit on Amazon, uh, you can find it there as well to do it on your TV. So I think that's a wrap for today's uh, UHIT Academy seminar. Um, the next seminar we're gonna do, it looks like we are gonna be lucky enough to have the author of the Performance Cortex, uh, Zach Schoenbring, join us. Um, and we're gonna talk about um, you know, measuring uh, the brains of hitters, something we did with Bruce and his teammates. Um, actually, much of that book was written uh, when we were working with the Reds in 2016. Um, so we're gonna we're really excited to have uh, the next U8 Academy Zoom seminar uh, be with Zach Schoenbrunn, and we're gonna get much more into the science side of things um, and uh, really what's under the hood um, in terms of these invisible mechanics. So we hope you guys can can join us for that. So um, thank you again, everybody. Um, seems like there are no other questions. Um, thank you, and uh, have a good day from uh, from all of us at UHIT. Thank you. Thanks, Bruce. Thank you.